This is the final episode in my Women Making Impact in and Outside the Home series, spanning four episodes. We began in episode 15 with the season to explore starting from our late teens to early adulthood. Then in episode 16, we moved on to the season of love, the family building season of our lives. Episode 17 talked about the season to root, which is that messy middle space when we're slowly processing all that we've learned so far, all the soft skills like relationship building, our self-care needs, boundary setting, money management, and time management, while exploring new information that can help guide us toward our next season in life. Finally, this week, I'm happy to explore the season to bloom, which is when we reach middle age from our mid-40s and onwards. Again, this is just an offering of my thoughts from what I've gathered around me through conversations and research. I hope you're learning from me as much as I'm learning from you. Thanks for joining me. Hello, welcome back to Doing Things on Purpose, the podcast that empowers women to take charge of their time, health, relationships, and money by doing things on purpose. I'm your host, Suri Stahel, and I'm so glad you've taken the time to join me here again today. Let's begin as usual with this week's mom check-in, simply because self-care is a non-negotiable if we want to serve optimally and live joyfully each and every single day. So how are you doing this week, ladies? Yesterday, I thought I wasn't doing so well, but today I feel somewhat better. My younger sister just gave birth a few days ago, so welcome to the club. It's December and I'm still doing my daily yoga following the free playlist from Yoga with Adrian on YouTube. What about you? If you're interested in trying yoga and wondering when to start, next January would be the perfect time to do that because to usher in the new year, Adrian posts an annual 30 days of yoga series, which features new videos uploaded daily to support us throughout the month of January. As usual, I'll include links from this episode on the show notes at surishtahil.com forward slash 18 for episode 18. Also, are you remembering to rest enough in between all of the effort and work that you put into your life? Which activities do you absolutely have to do versus the ones you choose to do? Is there something you can let go there? If you're feeling stuck about how to tweak your daily schedule, how to set priorities, or just on shifting your mindset, please feel free to send in your questions to me at surishtahel at gmail.com. In terms of organizing your days this December, make sure you've put down all the things that need to happen this month on your Google Calendar or app of choice. Oftentimes, if it's not scheduled in, It'll take much longer to get done and you forget things, whether it's putting up the Christmas decorations, wrapping presents, baking cookies, attending the office party, or planning gatherings with family and friends, it can seem overwhelming if we don't plan ahead. I'm far from suggesting that you fill up your schedule, but instead to spread out those activities punctuated by periods of rest. I know many moms are already feeling overwhelmed now, so I invite you to do less, to keep things simple. Take your time. Enjoy the process, even though the outcome may not be clear to you yet. You can always learn and grow from your experiences. I've learned, for instance, that I hate last-minute shopping. It often leads to me buying impersonal items that are only symbolic instead of thoughtful. Nowadays, I tape a sheet of paper to my children's closet and they're free to decorate and write out their wish list items throughout the year. Maybe it's for Christmas or maybe it's for their birthday. They just love spending time considering, editing, and decorating that list. 
and I also ask my relatives for their kids' wish lists ahead of time, since I'm not so good at crafting personalized gifts myself. For moms looking to save money, I think edible gifts such as homemade cookies, useful items such as craft and stationery for the kids, or experience gifts such as an IOU for a trip to the zoo can be perfectly wonderful because building stronger relationships is what celebrations are all about. I hope this can help you feel less burdened and help you look forward to the festive season ahead. So moving on to today's episode, which is Women Making Impact in the Season to Bloom. As I mentioned early on in this episode, this is the season when women in their mid-40s enter midlife. It's when we start to get more confident in our own skin and we're more clear about who we are. We've spent the last 10 to 20 years nurturing our family, learning about relationships, boundaries, and priorities. And as our kids start school, we've had some time to venture a little further beyond our family nucleus to re-engage with the outside world in a more active way. Since we're discussing an age group that I've not yet gone through personally, it was honestly hard for me to imagine what this time could look like. I knew that women are definitely ripe to bloom in this phase of our lives, but I needed some input from the older generation to help guide me to find out how. This has opened up a whole new resource for me. If I could sum up how fulfillment in this stage of life could look like, it would be about five things. Number one, self-understanding. Number two, reinvention. Number three, new learning. Number four, search for wisdom. And number five, the need to pay it forward through engagement. It's interesting to note that our 50s is when we finally reach our peak in evaluating and understanding other people's emotional states, which means we become better listeners. It marks a time when we'll encounter profound changes in many areas of our lives. But let's first start with how we can expect our physical bodies to change. What are the universal physical changes that women can expect to experience during this time? I want to ease your worries right now by saying that contrary to popular belief, Studies show that women above 50 view wrinkles and menopause as the least mentioned challenge that they've experienced in their lives so far. Sure, change can be scary, especially when it's unexpected, because many of us don't inform ourselves ahead of time. But for the most part, menopause becomes a normal part of life. Nevertheless, there are some good-to-know health-related information that I'd love women to keep in mind as we enter midlife and beyond. For women worldwide, know that menopause generally occurs between the ages of 45 and 55. Here are six health checkups that women over 40 should make sure they get. Number one is teeth cleaning and dental checkup at the dentist, which you should already be doing annually. Number two, a diabetes screening, which should take place every one to three years because type 2 diabetes can initially have no symptoms while quietly damaging the health of your inner organs, your eyes, your kidney, your nerves, your heart, and blood vessels. Test number three is a cholesterol check, which should take place every two to five years to monitor your risk of heart attacks and stroke. And another test that you need to do, which is test number four, is a blood pressure check which should be done annually. Test number five is going to the gynecologist to get your pap smear test, which should be done every three years. What this does is to detect cell changes and prevent the development of cervical cancer. Test number six are mammograms. Something to note, there is a pretty high percentage of false positive results when it comes to mammograms, and the rate is about 20%. So if you're requested to do an additional checkup, please don't panic early. The American Cancer Association recommends annual checks from the age of 45, while the Swiss Medical Association, Medics Schweiz, recommends optional biannual checks after 50. And in any case, your gynecologist normally checks your breasts when you are going for your pap smear test as well. 
Now, if you're above 50, there are three more health checkups that I want you to keep top of mind. Number one is a colonoscopy, which should be done after 50, but you only need to do the check every 10 years or so unless you decide to not have a colonoscopy and do a stool test instead, which should then take place every two years. The purpose of this test is to screen for colorectal cancer. Test number two for those over 50 is an eye pressure check at the ophthalmologist, which should be done every two to three years. This identifies the risk of green star or glaucoma, which causes nerve damage and eventually blindness. And the third and final test would be to get a bone density check. The first scan can be around 50 or postmenopause instead of the recommended age of 65 because this can help you detect if you have low bone mass and are at risk for osteoporosis. Know that about 20% of women over the age of 50 have osteoporosis and 50% have what's considered a low bone mass. I'll put together a printable list of these health checks, which you can find on the show notes of this episode and under my health guide at surishdahil.com forward slash health. Now, I want to turn to one of the most significant research I found from 2016 called the Seattle Midlife Women's Health Study. This is a 23-year study of 508 women in the U.S., which began in 1990 and continued to 2013. The study's purpose was to illuminate women's experiences of symptoms during the menopausal transition, but most interestingly, when the women were asked to list down their most challenging aspects of midlife, 81 women responded as follows. Few women mentioned menopausal transition as a meaningful factor. Instead, the most frequently reported challenges revolved around stressors which co-occurred at the same time. So it could be divorce or breaking up with a partner, health problems, and death of parents, which all happen around the same year. Other themes mentioned were changing family relationships with siblings, parents-in-laws, children, Another theme is about rebalancing work and personal life, rediscovering oneself, and of course, financial concerns. Basically, it is to say that when it rains, it pours. So how can we be more resilient and prepare for that? Because this theme keeps repeating itself, even in the early phases of our lives. We're always having to balance many things at once. And I think this shows that that tendency is not about to go away. So we have to learn how to deal with that. One phrase I heard recently about how to build a satisfying life was thinking about it as not so much a game of balance, which sounds precarious, but as a distribution of resources. Give what you care about, whether it's your work, your children, your spouse, your health, your spirit. Complete undivided attention at least once every single day. The percentages can vary among those things, but at least once a day, you pay attention to all of those pieces. Don't let any part of your life get the leftovers. What's clear in many studies of women in midlife is that we need strong connections and relationships to guide us through. It helps us develop and flourish. Sociologist Dr. Sarah Lawrence Lightfoot author of the book, The Third Chapter, Passion, Risk, and Adventure in the 25 Years After 50, talks about this being the season of engagement over retreat, labor over leisure, and reinvention over retirement. For those entering midlife who are finally tired of being afraid, they start to become less cautious about learning a new skill or trying out new things that they were too shy or too insecure to do before. If we so choose, this is when, as better listeners and willing learners, we can unlearn old ways of doing things. We become more collaborative instead of individualistic. We learn to be more cooperative instead of competitive. We learn to be more open and vulnerable instead of hiding our mistakes. We start to practice patience and restraint instead of chasing speed and achievement. We value being wise and not just being smart. 
and we choose to engage and be curious of others instead of staying isolated. The bottom line is, whatever profession, area, skill set, or new experiences that you've explored and found exciting in the last season to root, make this next season to bloom a time when you unapologetically show yourself. You can find like-minded people to engage with, whether it's peers or coaches. Oftentimes, we don't find people who are similar to us in our circle of friends, so search out communities that can support us, join events, go to conferences, join forums, take courses, check out Facebook groups, Reddit, social media, and keep learning, playing, and growing. You can always choose the higher education route, explore online courses, find mentors to help you move forward. So here's a list of resources that you could consider looking into. As I mentioned, check out Harvard professor Dr. Sarah Lawrence Lightfoot. I'll put the link in the show notes. Secondly, you can check out Barbara Hannah Grufferman, a positive aging advocate and author of The Best of Everything After 50. And number three, check out the Modern Elder Academy, founded by Chip Conley, author of Learning to Love Midlife. I hope this episode has helped you dream a little more to look forward to blossoming into your big, beautiful self during this extended phase of life. While we don't all have to lead big, bold lives, we can each create meaningful impact in our own unique ways by living a life of joy, in service, and with connection. If you need help finding a community for you to connect with, depending on your area of interest, please email me at surishtyle at gmail.com and I'll try to help you out or message me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. If you like this episode, please remember to rate it five stars and share it with a friend. The show notes can be found at surishtahil.com forward slash 18. Thanks again for listening in. This is Doing Things on Purpose with me, Suri, and I'll catch you again next time.